Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Hyde, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome Jeff Gannon, Building Construction Technologies Instructor at Central Carolina Community College, a graduate of American University and the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Mr. Gannon is a licensed North Carolina general contractor and is involved in the building of sustainability companies in North Carolina. Jeff, welcome to 4C Visions. RV, good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, here to promote the Building Construction Technologies Program, CCCC. Great. Jeff, the Central Carolina Community College Building Construction Technology Program is located on the college's Chatham main campus in Pittsburgh. Share with our audience what is involved in the study of building construction technology and who might be ideal students for this program. So we have got a really unique program in Chatham that uh, I'm really pleased to be a part of. Uh, so what this is, it's a hands-on uh, learning opportunity for students to uh, not only implement book knowledge that we study in the classroom, uh, but also to put on tool belts, get out, and we build a small house on the campus. And, uh, and that, ca that cottage that we build is then auctioned to the public every year. So students that are coming into the program, they learn in the classroom, they implement in the lab, and we build this real world project. It's a, it's a bona fide uh, house um, that then is auctioned off to the public. Great. Well, sustainability is a key component of the program. Why is sustainability important in the building process? So sustainability uh, after design, it's probably the most crucial component when you are building a house. Anytime you build something, it is a significant investment. And you want to turn that investment uh, around so it is serving you. If you build a house sustainably, you're not only taking care of this planet, being mindful of climate change, but you are also building a home that is going to be healthy and responsible towards its local use of local resources and energy consumption. So sustainability, I would say after design, is the most crucial component to, to home building. Well, what aspects of the building construction technology do you believe is the most surprising for the general public? You know, frankly, it's probably cost. Mm -hmm. uh, the building construction industry is just immensely expensive, which uh, ties back into why sustainability is so important. Um, it's, it's, and, and that is probably the number one factor that continually surprises the public. It even surprises me how expensive home construction can be. That said, when building a project in the upfront cost, that is not where you want to skimp on valuable dollars that will then turn around and make that investment grow for you. So uh, a home that is built with sustainable design features will not only be more healthy to live in and more uh, responsible towards our resource uses, usage, but uh, it's going to be more cost effective to live in. Well, some people are turning to smaller homes. What is it that makes these smaller homes so appealing to the general public? So uh, I came across an interesting stat this morning. In 1973, the average home size was just over 1,600 square feet. Uh, in 2013, the average home size was just under 2,700 square feet. So that's a, a growth of 1,000 square feet for the, the same average family size. Uh, the interest in small homes is looking back towards the past, recognizing that we don't need all of that square footage. Uh, in fact, all that square footage adds you know, higher utility bills, uh, more space to clean, frankly. Uh, so I think people are recognizing that they're wanting to reduce their daily living costs and seeing the benefit of a more sensibly designed, uh, appropriately sized house and how that can increase quality of life. 
Well, the Chatham Cottage is a great example of these smaller homes. What is the Chatham Cottage and what responsibilities do you and your classes have in producing these cottages? So as part of our building construction technologies program, students take all kinds of courses from architecture, you know, an intro to architectural drawing and drafting to building science. And in the building science, students learn about construction techniques and how they affect the way a building performs. In the construction course, we implement these theories and concepts with hammer nails and pieces of wood, and we build the Chatham Cottage. Uh, the cottage last year was about 572 square feet. It um, was then auctioned off. So this is a you know, real-world cottage that we built on campus. Uh, we then had an auction last July, and a young man, for the first time, was the winning bidder on that cottage and that is going to be his first home mm -hmm. so that's also a change supporting your question about the interest in smaller houses so now instead of these cottages being second homes or little cabins in the woods this is this gentleman's first home and he's going to enter that equation with equity in his pocket mm -hmm. so he's already going to have 10 20 percent of equity uh, in his pocket when he, you know, uh, gets this. So he, we build it, and then he's responsible for moving it from our campus to his lot, and then doing the additional connections and so forth. But right off the bat, from a financial perspective, he's ahead of the game. Um, and then from a sustainability perspective, he's got a very high quality house that's going to be very comfortable to live in and healthy to live in um, and he got it at a great cost and then he's doing some really good because stu he's supporting a program where students got to implement the knowledge that they learned in the classroom and in the lab and put their hard work and their sweat into a project that they can feel great about and he can feel great about living in. And t you may go over the time frame as to how long it takes you to build these homes and when do they become available for auction to the public? So the way we do it is we build a home a year. So every fall with the incoming students that come in in the fall, uh, that is the construction one class. And over the next three semesters, we have a summer semester for the BCT program. Uh, we build that cottage from the ground up. Um, so that basically is from your floor framing system all the way through the roof, siding, doors, windows, uh, finished floor, the, the whole shebang. And students do 95% of that work. Students will be doing the wiring. Students will be doing the plumbing. Uh, and, and then in July of that following year, we have our auction and then Ideally, we're going to have the cottage, then we either move it down to our lower parking lot until the winning bidder can get that person's lot prepped and ready uh, for the cottage to then go to the final permanent site. Um, and then that following fall, we start all over again. So in short, we start in the fall, and by the following July, we're finished, we auction it, and following September, the cottage is out of our way and we're starting all over again. Wow. What do you believe is the most important feature in any new home, whether it be a smaller or a larger home? So the most important feature is design. Uh, you really need to think about the way the house works, uh, lay, the layout, your floor plan, and how well that fits your life and your patterns of life. Um, that's, that, that by far has got to be the most important feature of a well-built home and, or well-designed home. And then, of course, quality construction. Well, what advice would you give for someone who may be considering building a new home? So uh, I would definitely recommend that you spend a good amount of time understanding your individual pattern of life. So you want to be aware of 
how far you're willing to commute to work. Um, what kind, do you spend time on your front porch? Do you spend all of your time indoors? Do you uh, like to walk in the neighborhood? These are those, these other sort of incidental qualities that we often forget about when we're out house shopping are very crucial to making sure that somebody is satisfied in that house that, that they build. Jeff, what do you find is the most enjoyable part of your uh, position as head of the program? It, by far, hands down, it's working with students. I've got some of the most fantastic uh, students and that continually surprise me with their perseverance, with their, uh, their interest in learning, their interest in bettering themselves and, uh, and going on to achieve really awesome stuff. Um, speaking of students, I, I do want to mention, so the students, the building construction field is, is a tremendously wide field. There are places, all kinds of places in the spectrum that uh, are, there's job opportunities, there's room for growth, and so it's not all about swinging the hammers and carrying heavy pieces of wood. There's really a place uh, for a huge variety of people. In the program, I'm really proud to say that we have almost 50% women. Mm. Uh, and so that is, that is that's a fantastic thing, I think. The construction industry is looking towards women as uh, a large market of, our, of the employment possibilities. So, uh, yeah. So, and, and with your students, what do you hear most from them as for the reasons that they get into the building construction technologies so, program? You know, a lot of the students are, well, it, and the reasons are pretty broad as well. We have students that recognize that the job growth is going to be tremendous. It's the fifth largest growing industry in North Carolina. Uh, in Chatham County, locally, we are experiencing a huge construction boom. Um, and then we also have in Chatham County a large do-it-yourself uh, market or, or a spirit of do-it-yourselfers where folks want to empower themselves and learn how to fix these things themselves or build these things themselves. So that's also a, a con percentage of the student body. But um, I would say the majority are recognizing that it's a, it's a very rewarding and satisfying career that uh, you can have all kinds of flexibility and growth in, in a construction career. If there are some prospective students in our viewing audience today, what do they need to do to obtain further information on the program? <clears throat> so I would recommend that uh, they, they get in contact with me. Uh, they can find my contact information on the CCC uh, main uh, website. And uh, if they do a Google search at that website for building construction technologies, uh, my contact info is there. They can call me, shoot me an email. I'm happy to give them a tour. Come up and see me, and I'm, I'm happy to show you the campus. Sounds good. Well, Jeff, thank you for being with us today, and we will return right after these messages. Morning, Gary. We are Get Schooled. Dakar. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? I got this. <laughs> Is that brand? <laughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to getschool.com for more info. And then from this angle, it all makes a star. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. So show up 
and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. And then we're going to turn on the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. I'm a teacher. I make more. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah. I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. You're texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, is she texting me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Welcome back to 4C Visions. Today we welcome Ken Hoyle Jr., CCCC Vice President of Student Services. Mr. Hoyle is a native of Sanford and a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and NC State University. He and his wife Sandra are the parents of three sons, Richard, Seth, and Hunter. He has been employed at the college since 1991 and has served as an instructor, admissions counselor, college registrar, dean, and vice president of student services. Ken, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you, sir. I appreciate Glad it. Glad to have you. Well, Ken, what, do you, what are your duties specifically as Vice President of Student Services, and what do those duties entail? Well, I oversee a rather large division that has several departments under it, admissions, registration and records, financial aid, VA, athletics and activities, the library, and also campus security. And also in the role that I have, I'm also the chief disciplinarian with the student code of conduct for all three campuses. Okay. What is the current enrollment at Central Carolina Community College? And how does that compare to other schools within the North Carolina Community College system? That is a bright spot for our college. Um, our current enrollment in curriculum is 5,214. And over last year, we're up a little over 1%. And that does not sound like a lot. But in speaking with my peers and student services all over the state, we're one of about five schools that is actually up. Most of the 58 schools are down and down significantly in double digits. Uh, great majority, of course, are our traditional curriculum students, but we also have a high number of the career and college promise students through the high school. A little over 1,400, about 1,450 in the high school. And my son is one of our CCP students as well. Um, 118 down at the Hornet Correctional Institute. So 1% may not sound like a lot, but we will take it compared to what our, our peers are having to contend with right now. Well, the residency status for in-state tuition charges changes for this year. What is that change? Uh, that change has been in the making for about two years now. Um, currently, when a student is flagged to be charged out-of-state tuition, they can appeal that with a paper application that they turn in to the records office. And those of us who are certified to determine residency we have to take a class every year at the UNC General Administration Office in Chapel Hill, 
uh, it's the, the Dean of Enrollment, uh, the Dean of Support Services, the Dean of Admissions, and myself, and we make up the residency committee. This student fills out this blue appeals application, and since we're all counselors at heart, we can look at this application, and if we have some questions about it, we can call the student in and say, is this how you really meant to answer this? Or, you know, if you could bring me in your tax return or a copy of your car registration, I think we can work with that. Um, that will all be going away. It is now going to be centralized and computerized. We have to provide a portal for them to apply online to receive in-state designation, and that will be handled by the state. The state will make a determination whether the student is, or will be in-state or out-of-state, and then we are notified, but we are given no reason why. Uh, it's just our job to tell the student. We're a little apprehensive about that because we are trying to work with students and help them, and the only way I can help them is I, if I have something to work with. And so with this new centralized state system, it's going to be he or she's out of state, and that's kind of where it will be. Right. Well, campus safety and security is an issue for any college or university. Uh, what measures have been taken uh, to provide for that safety and security here at CCCC? We have been very aggressive in the security area, and it's an area that I'm very proud of that we've made such progress. We have the, the guards that we have on campus day and night. We have a security director who has a professional designation and he stays current with his designation by taking his continuing education classes. He goes to about three or four workshops a year to find out what the most current trends are and things that we need to work on. Um, we have one thing that I'm particularly proud of we've done active shooter drills on this campus and the Harnett campus, and we have done a tabletop active shooter drill exercise on the Chatham campus. And so we're gonna repeat that cycle around. What we do is we go through the motions as if we really have an emergency on campus. Then we have a meeting with all our law enforcement agencies that participated, and we have a post-op, and they tell us, it would really help us if you guys could do such and such. And VP Price, who is in charge of our physical facilities, he and I then take that information and they work, we work with the President's Council to make those improvements. So we really stay ahead of the game with that. And also one thing that I've been able to add is a committee called a Behavioral Assessment Team. And it is for various administrators and faculty to meet together as a committee. I'm on the committee, but I'm not a voting member. But anyone can make a referral to the BAT, and these are not folks who've broken the code of conduct, but these are people whose behaviors may be concerning. And the security is on this committee as well. They deliberate and they talk, and they make a recommendation to me, and as I say, I'm not voting uh, then I act upon what the behavioral assessment team suggests. We're trying to be proactive here to prevent anything. Well, what is Title IX, and how does that affect CCCC as well as all other colleges and universities? Title IX is a federal law that was passed in 1972. It's very comprehensive, but it's basically aimed at promoting uh, gender equity in all educational programs um, in education that receive federal funds. And basically what it's saying is that you cannot discriminate in any educational program or deprive the benefit of someone based on their sex. And we hear a lot about it with athletics because that's front and center in the news a lot. And that's why you have men's teams, women's teams, et cetera but it's really more comprehensive than that. We, of course, are in compliance with all aspects of Title IX. I mean, we have an open door admissions policy. Uh, you can enter any curriculum program that we offer, irrespective of your gender. Uh, the thing that has gotten into the news in the past year, 
Uh, unfortunately, with Chapel Hill, one component they have in there in Title IX is about sexual harassment, and where it was determined from a complaint at Chapel Hill that a culture of sexual harassment was allowed to uh, exist. Uh, for that reason, uh, we don't have an issue at Central Carolina Community College because we have sexual harassment and sexual assault and various criminal activities in our code of conduct. And when I get any type of referral from faculty or staff on a discipline matter, I, I put that at the top of my to-do list. And our consultants have told us that if you have a strong code of conduct and you act quickly, and you act swiftly and equitably with all involved, you won't have any problem there. So um, Title IX um, is, is, is an important law at all universities and colleges, but it's one that um, we, we pay attention to. We have a direct uh, coordinator, Title IX coordinators, Dean Heather Willett. We have a deputy coordinator, the HR director, Trinity Fawcett. So if there were a claim of that nature, they could act on it. Well, Ken, give our viewers a brief update on the CCCC athletics program. Well, in the fall, we had a golf team under coach Jonathan Hockaday, and one of the highlights there, one of our players had a hole in one. Oh, wow. So that doesn't happen all the time. And women's volleyball had, a, had their season. Uh, that's under Coach Bill Carter. He's been with us a good while. And Coach Carter has started his signings for next year. He had a really large uh, group this year, and he's hoping to build upon that. Uh, men's basketball is, you know, we're in that season right now. They have a really big game tonight against Davidson Community College, who perennially has a juggernaut team uh, and their fans are very rabid and they travel and so they will be here tonight at seven o'clock on on our campus they are currently seven and four uh, but doug is very very good coach and he's worked very hard with this group they they won last night in a tight game in an overtime overtime situation uh, we will be we're working on adding cross country for next year and so the signings for that and everything will be coming out this spring. Perfect. Ken, you have said that graduation day is the happiest day on this campus. Why is that? And why do you what do you enjoy most about graduation day? Well, graduation day is a day where it's, there's like electricity in the air with the faculty, the staff, the students, and everybody. Because, you know, everybody who comes out here to the college is attempting to write a story. And those students who've come out here and they have met that goal, and they've gotten their credential, it's almost to say, you know, this is, uh, this is the end of this story. I'm getting writing, ready to write another one. And so the, the anticipation that you see with the students uh, you get to see their families. Uh, the, the nice thing about working in a community college and being a native of this community, when I go to the grocery store, when I go to the drug store, when I have taken my elderly parents to the doctor's office, I see all the, of our students. And they remember me, or they remember my name, or they remember my face. Um, and at graduation day, I'm sitting up there on the stage and I get to see these folks that I helped at the very beginning with their application or if they had some issue with financial aid or their residency. Um, and just, it's just so satisfying to get them graduated and they have met the goal they set for themselves and to have a part in that is just, I can't give you the adjective for the, the type of feeling that will give you. Well, Ken, you've been at the college since 1991. What makes Central Carolina Community College such a special place for students? Students first. Uh, when I was hired in 91, I was hired by Dean Avery Upchurch, uh, who served as my mentor. And Mr. Upchurch told me, he said, Ken, whatever you do, whatever you're working on, you've got to put student access, student retention, and student success first and foremost. 
and whatever plans you're making, whatever actions you're taking. And so everything that we do w that w w was done under Mr. Upchurch and Dr. Joyner and now under Dr. Marchant and myself and Dr. Merritt, that has continued and it permeates all the way down to the faculty, it permeates down into my office area, into our library, everywhere. And from having children who've been applying to college, I can tell you that's maybe not the philosophy every school has. And so I'm just proud to be a part of a school that has that philosophy. Well, it's great to have you with us, Ken. You do an incredible job. And we appreciate you being on our show today. And we want to thank our viewers for being with us for 4C Visions. We're good? Yep. All right.